The Braxton's, here we go. This August, the Braxton's are back with a whole new reality. It's like a seat's missing. I just miss her. Four sisters. I wonder how that's going to be working together again. We need to have some type of support. Four journeys. I haven't performed in over four years. You accept me or you just don't accept me. Y'all got so many secrets. This is not the forum. You've never seen a homecoming like this. How about that? The Braxton's premieres Friday, August 9th on WeTV. Stream on All Black. Carolyn for Karen and Toss Podcast YouTube channel. Thank you so much for taking the time for speaking with us today. And thank you so much for sharing um, everything that your family is going through with the loss of Tracy. So my condolences to you and to your extended you. family. You. And so I know it's not hard to talk about grief, especially on such a public forum. But I'm going to phrase this question to Wanda specifically because I have multiple sclerosis and I also have yes. fibromyalgia. So I have two okay. invisible autoimmune disease. So I okay. want to talk to you about how of how, how, showing the world who you are now that you have, um, you've been diagnosed with alopecia and you're living mm -hmm. your life with the, with the hair loss and you're being proud of that because I think it's important for Black women, especially because yes. we are taught so much from, from young to chair, to focus so much on our appearances, you know, when we leave yes. home, make sure you're dressed properly, you know, make mm -hmm. sure you're set from head to toe, especially with regards to our hair. So talk to me about the hair loss and that the grieving process for that, because I know once you receive a diagnosis of an yeah. condition, there is mm -hmm. a grieving process. Mm -hmm. And I know in the show that like, there's going to be a grief counselor to talk to you guys about grief. So can you talk about the grieving process of that part of your life and dealing with the the diagnosis and how you, that's changed who you are as a person, how you see yourself? Well, um, you know, authentically, I knew at a very young age that my hair was different from everyone else's in the families. Um, although it, I didn't see traces or by definition of having alopecia when I was a teenager, I definitely saw it when I was in my 20s that um, the top of my hair was thinning. So during that time, I kind of suppressed it and tried to pretend that it wasn't was what wasn't was what it was. Um, so um, when Tracy um, was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and um, when we decided to cut our hair in, in solitude for her, um, I did it for two reasons. I did it because I was hiding behind the fact that I knew by definition that I had alopecia, um, but I did it in solidarity for Tracy. So when I, when I cut my hair, I shaved my hair, it was a relief of knowing that I I did not have to tell the whole world, hey, I have alopecia, even though I knew by definition I had it. Um, and then there was an unspoken thing when we have people in our hair, like our hairdressers, they kind of know, but they didn't say it out loud, that this is what it is, Tawana. They didn't want to embarrass me. And whatever reason it was, they didn't want to say, hey, Tawana, I know that this is what's going on with your hair. Um, um, but there's a, a, a special, amazing moment that I cannot wait for everybody to see where Tracy is rubbing my head. Um, and, um, that, that was a, it was a, it was a spiritual awakening for me to know that, okay, Tracy's going through all the things that she's going through. She's fighting for her life and she's having the strength to keep fighting for her life. So why can't I have the strength to tell the world that I have alopecia? That's not a, a it's not a, 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 a disease or something that's, um, fatal, but Tracy has something that that's fatal and she's still fighting. Um, and she's still standing strong. So um, why can't I do it too? And so that that gave me the strength to say, I just have to tell the whole world and it's okay that I have alopecia because my hair does not define who I am. Um, a lot of times I know that in, in, in our community, our hair shows our strength in some ways, um, but my strength is not in my follicles of my hair. My strength is in my spirit. So that's something that I had to embrace. And I decided to embrace to help the other individuals, the other women or men who have alopecia to say it's okay. Thank you so much for sharing it. Because I think it's important for us, especially as Black women in particular, to embrace the ball. Yes. And like having yeah. low hair. And, and like, <laughs> and I think it's important, especially even someone like me having low a low haircut. You know, there's mm -hmm. judgment that comes with that. So I appreciate that. Yes. And you have a fantastic shape head. So like, thank you. <laughs> Thanks to my mother and my father for rubbing my head at a young age, right? At a, as a baby, they molded Th me. Thank you. <laughs> you guys, we've talked a lot about there's grief, joy, loss, you know, like connection and, and gifts and everything. I want to ask you about, you've been doing this show for so many years. Mm -hmm. The world has changed since the first season to mm -hmm. now. Your family has changed from the first season to now. 
You know, you individually have changed for, from first season to now. Social media has changed from the first, yes, it has. From the first season to now. <laughs> I want you both to talk about how social media and how people see reality TV shows, especially reality TV shows about Black families and a family that's as predominant as yours in the music scene, like R&B and all and gospel, how you how so the way that social media and the internet and reality TV shows has changed has made you change the way you approach filming this show from the first season to now because this season is very different it's much more intimate it's much more centered mm -hmm. on a specific um, event so talked about how social media all of that how everything has changed has made the way you approach filming and the way you take time to make sure you know what I'm going to step back from this, but I'm also going to, this is what my sister wanted me to do. So um, you can go with Trina first and then Tawanda, you can ask her second. Okay. okay. Um, I think one of the things that's happening, especially with a lot of social mediums, uh, these young people, especially, they feel like they need to expose everything, whether it's their business, whether it's their bodies, whether it's intimate details in their relationships that people just don't need to know. And I think it's also important for us to have a duty, not just as a family, not just as women of a certain age, but also as African-American women. I wanna to appeal to all women, don't misunderstand me, but it's very important as African-American women that you show that you can disagree and you can quarrel without getting physical. Um, everything is not throwing a glass of wine in someone's face or grabbing someone's hair. And we are going to disagree. We may say some words that are unsavory, but you still need to learn how to handle yourself in a mature and responsible way because that is no longer being depicted not just on social mediums but on television as well but you could include television as a social medium if you want to know the truth because you know uh people are watching these young mm -hmm. girls are watching these young people are looking for someone to emulate and if the only thing that they can possess on these screens is negativity and nakedness and quite frankly, unscrupulous behaviors. What are we gonna do? Where, where is our job? And this job is grown black women. How do we help guide and direct them to become young women who are, you know, that, that show uh, perfection? to show someone that a man wants to marry. I've noticed, it's, don't get me to talking too long, guys. I have noticed that the pendulum is changing in the amount of marriages happening. Everything is exposed. You've already shown everybody what this man or woman or whatever, whoever you're with is gonna get. And it's not necessary. You have to learn to reserve something for yourself. And that's just my personal long-winded opinion. <laughs> Um, um, for, I, I, what I am experiencing now with the new series of the Braxton's and not being the Braxton family values, um, is that of course it had to change and it had to emerge because of the loss of Tracy. Mm -hmm. So Braxton family values was, was, was with all of us and the Braxton is without the physical aspect of Tracy being a part of it. But I will also say that we had to grow up. We grew up life experiences changed us in a way that we had to face the real reality that this is life. And it's not that we didn't know that before. It's just that we really experienced it. I mean, I'm, I, Trina experienced the loss of her ex-husband. We all experienced the loss of our niece and our, you know, other loved ones that have had, that has passed these past three years. It was like back to back, back to back. But these individuals that are on social media, I don't think that they really understand the, the, the reality of life and what could happen or what may happen and it doesn't last forever. Um, and that we all have to go through changes and we have to accept people where they are in the way of their growth. We can't put a time stamp on how a person grows. We can't put a time stamp on how a person stands still or however that may look for them. Um, so for me, even when it comes to social media, if there are some negative things or things that people are saying or throwing rocks and hiding their hand and living in a glass house or however it is, um, I, I have the ability to just ignore them because I mental to me mental health is a big thing in our community and the whole world of course but it's a it's a big thing in our community and what i have learned not to do i don't argue with sick yes. people and i know that sounds crazy 
But I don't argue with sick people because even though you may not see that the mental aspect of their disabilities and you see the physical things of their disabilities of saying, okay, if I see a person that's physically disabled or physically ill, if I go into a hospital, I can physically see that they're ill. I'm not going to argue with those individuals because I can physically see that they're ill. It's the same thing to me when it comes to mental illness. If I know factually that they have that situ that that illness mentally, I'm not arguing with them. There's no reasoning with a person who's ill in that way. Yeah, that's true. A lot of ill people do sick things. That's it. You have to learn to ignore it. Great. Thank you so much, because I think it's important that people understand that, as you said, this season is this is a brand new um, series and it's not um, Rasta Family Value. So it's a whole new dynamic, but it's also a new approach to the way how the show is being filmed and how mm -hmm. you are approaching the, the show as um, a family and individually. So thank you so much for sharing that. Of thank course. You. Thank you.